Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial and tutorial number 10 And today or now we are going to go, or, uh, talk about the descent So First thing you should do before you descend Is to calculate the uh, performance uh, Landing and route here Calculate your uh, runway So First you go to do select the runway Go to left to the left And the condition is dry the landing weights, you get the landing weights. You can go to the progress page here. You see that we have 3.8 tons, or that is what we expect to land in Copenhagen with. And we have 5.8, correction, 5, corre sorry, 4.5 tons. You just take 4.5 minus 3.8, and that is going to give you about uh, 700 kilograms. Then you can go to the approach reference, and then gross weight, just by the, uh, uh, subtract 700 kilograms. So that's going to be 60. 64 700 so then it just had 64 700 here you select the flaps flaps 30 packs on anti as well that's going to be the same as for departure auto break normal three uh, if it is uh, dry conditions the which usually uh, the which part is usually don't use auto break at all use manual braking but if it is a contaminated runway like it's raining or something normally you use auto break three we are fed Normally music 5 And we're going to get the weather So the weather is coming in It's going to be 0, 0, 0 at 0 knots Temperature 15 QNH 1, 0, 1, 3 And then hit calculate so That's going to be here for 153 These have added a 5 knots We need to subtract 5 knots to get the correct one That's going to be 153 minus 5 That's going to be 148 148 To get that you can click it once, click it twice, and then insert it. And it's going to be the same with the takeoff. It is within one knot, you can use that, otherwise, you need to type it manually. So, when we are going to begin our set, that is going to be in approximately 46 miles. And as well, remember that you are going to uh, march up the heading. So, a good feature is that uh, post every Boeing aircraft is that when you have a little lower altitude in the MCP, the aircraft is going to descend automatically. So if you say we will begin to descend down to 15,000 feet. When we then hit or fly over the top of the descent marker, the aircraft is going to begin to descend automatically. So, then for our approach, we're going to land the islands to the left, so we're going to set that up. First, we're going to set up the courses. So the run heading is going to be 217 degrees So 217 And 217 The LSTME is going to be 1095 You don't need to add that extra zero um, But you can just do that uh, If, uh, for example, we can... How can we do that? Uh, if you select GLS, we get an error here. Now we basically have broken the MM, uh, or the multi mode receiver on the navigator here. To fix that, as you can see, we now have lost our decimal. You click the uh, the clear button, you can hold it in, and you need to hold it in again. There you go, and now the decimal is back. So then you can type normally in. So if you cut that error message, just hold down the clear button and then the uh, uh, the decimal should be back on again and we also got to select that here as well One, uh, 1095 and on the active for our minimums the 77 is the category charlie aircraft um, and that is uh, not uh, added here but if you have different options that say A and then the Minimums and then so on. We're going to use the category Charlie or C. Uh, if you have a minimum to set altitude like this, we're going to add another 40 feet. The minimum to set altitude that means you are not going to be you are not going to descend below that altitude. So approximately 40 feet uh, extra. That's going to uh, if you need to go around, then you're going to dip under a little bit uh, before you're able to climb out. So under another 40 feet, and then that should be good. But if you have a decision height like it says here, DA. And the H, you can just add whatever it is. So the uh, 
the figure uh, uh, numbers they are in the barrow or barometric altitude and in the uh, parenthesis here it is uh, in above ground level so we got to use ground level is just used for automatic landings or category uh, 2 and 3 ILSs this is a normal ILS so we could just, just got to use 208 barrow so then we need to select 208 There you go, 208. We also got to set auto brake if we're going to use anything. We are going to use it. Uh, we are not going to use it, so we could just uh, leave it at off. And yes. And then you're going to confirm that the missed approach is set. So it says, go to climb straight ahead to 500 feet. Or DME 1 Oscar XC Sierra, our earliest DME. Which aims later, then turn left onto 187 uh, degrees and climb to 3000. To check that, go to the FMC. Uh, what you can do also, you can just delete the engine outside. You don't need that anymore. You can check here, runway, then head track 217 degrees. And then vector on the heading of 187. So that is the engine outside. Oh, sorry, the missed approach. Again, enable 250. Just go to say 249. And execute. And now that should be fixed. You're also going to check the transition level. If you have ATC online, like it says here, by ATC, we're going to check the ATC. If not, you're just going to use the transition altitude, and this case that's going to be flight to 50, and we have set that already. So, yes. Then you wanted to do your uh, uh, descent checklist. So, you don't need to do your descent checklist before you begin your descent. Uh, if uh, one of the points there is the uh, approach briefing, and uh, you might not be able to do that before your descent because if it's a short route or uh, you don't know the runway you're going to land at yet. Uh, so we can do it later, but uh, normally you will do it before your descent. If we especially flying a flight like this, that's a little bit longer. So then, descent checklist. So precession, put the cover the landing onto it. That is at the zero feet. Recall, checked. Normally you sh should do the recall before you do the checklist. Uh, auto brake. That's off. Landing data. So flaps 30, 1 for 8 knots. Minimums 208 feet. And approach breathing complete. So there you go, then the descent checklist is complete. So you can see we are closing up on our top of descent. 6 miles, and you can see the aircraft is now going to decelerate. And uh, it should now begin its descent automatically in any moment. Go, it have been able to decelerate and any moment now 1.5 miles and there you go the aircraft is descending automatically so what we will do now we will uh, Make a P800 passengers, say something about arrival time, and so on. For arrival time, you could just say, Hey, we're going to that uh, 1016, it says 950. That's going to be approximately around 25 minutes. So, again, as we did on the climb, when passing flight to 300, we're going to change the uh, uh, heading selector from 10 degrees to 25. And uh, if you are flying on 11 Vina, uh, there is nothing to worry about uh, on your descent here. Uh, Vina, and v uh, Vina is going to take everything, speed, vertical speed and everything. So passing flight to 300, you can set back to 25. So also a very good feature in the aircraft. If you, for example, like in Copenhagen, you get vectors. Uh, if you go down to the FMC and the descent page, here you get the vertical speed. So the vertical speed to uh, I know if you want to reach that altitude you are at uh, 15,000 feet at Arno you need a constant vertical speed of uh, approximately 1,200 uh, feet. So if you say that we are passing one of the waypoints uh, here and we get flight like, present heading or something, you can just select the final approach fix. Uh, that is going to be Charlie to the left here. Select that like this or top block. 
of the descent. And here you go. You need approximately 1,400. Um, uh, 1,400 in the vertical speed or the vertical speed uh, to reach. Uh, that's going to be then 3,000 feet at uh, at uh, Charlie in the altitude to left. So that's a very handy feature. So except if you get uh, uh, get a direct or sorry a, uh, vectors, you can do that, and then you can use the vertical speed selector and select the proper vertical speed. So again, a really handy feature inside the aircraft. And then you can just want to here 126 watts until the end, and we are. Uh, and then you can see the fuel we are going to have when we land in uh, Copenhagen. So, uh, to decide when to go to turn on the passenger signs, uh, it is two uh, things you're going to consider flight level 150 and 15 minutes. So, both are going to be 15. If you're passing flight level 150 before uh, it is 15 minutes for arrival, you go to turn the seatbelts when passing flight level 150. If uh, 15 minutes until landing is, uh, or when you're passing 15 minutes until landing before passing flight level 150, you go to turn the seatbelts at 15 minutes before landing instead. So, which area is uh, earlier, basically? So, like I said, we go to land at 16. The clock is currently. Uh, 53, so that means you go to turn the seatbelts at uh, 10 or 1 or 15,000 feet, feet, whichever is earlier. So as you can see here, we are now approaching some clouds in front of us. So it's going to be the same procedure. Engine start with just two continuous and the engine anti is on. And uh, but the temperature when you go to use the DI. There you go. We are now uh, went out of the clouds, so we are not in the cloud anymore. We can still let the start switch go to continuous, but we going to turn off the anti eyes. Uh, it seems like we're going to need to uh, turn that on later on, but anti ice should still go off, but the uh, start switches can still be as continuous. And uh, when we are closing down, or when we are uh, descending down, uh, we don't need the airport, uh, uh, the airport data anymore. So uh, we can remove that and we can uh, take the uh, terrain instead because we are approaching the ground. So. It is good to have the terrain so we know what is uh, around us, especially if it is mountainous terrain in the area. As you can see now, we are approaching the clouds again, so you can turn on the engine at the ice. And we have uh, passed 20,000 feet to descend it down. Uh, so yes, I think that is going to cover it for the descent. So I hope that you enjoyed this one, and the next one should be the approach and landing. So yeah, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed, and hope to see you again on a future live stream. So have a good one. Bye bye.